Trip killers are a lie, is what I would say if they didn't also work, they do work, but not how you might think. Let's first make it clear that whilst this video will attempt to explain everything you need to know about using trip killers for harm reduction purposes, trip killers themselves can be really dangerous. Fentanyl is literally the leading cause of death between ages 18 to 45 in the US, and common trip killers like Xanax can notoriously have more fentanyl than Quagmire has STDs. Well, that one I'm actually not too sure about, but this does need to be taken seriously, so I've left a link below to some places you can buy test kits online. So moving on, sometimes you just need to kill a trip. Do I recommend it? Generally, no, I don't think every time you come across challenge, you should just pop a Xanax and ditch some potentially really valuable lessons without even giving them a hug and a kiss goodbye. My biggest issue with trip killers is the side effects. For example, our best option, benzos, often make you forget so much. So it's not just those future insights you're leaving at the altar, but it could also be any of the life-changing stuff you experienced for the whole trip. It also goes without saying that instead of an afterglow, you'll probably wake up the next day tired and maybe feeling hungover instead. But uh, as much as I've gossiped about these trip killers behind their back, they're actually potential lifesavers. Whilst losing the value from your trip sucks balls, traumatizing yourself, going through multiple lifetimes of hell, or physically hurting yourself or others can suck a whole lot more than just balls. Yeah, most of the time it will be better to go through whatever the trip is trying to show you, but when researching this video, I was disappointed to see a decent chunk of our community preaching that trip killers are bad and you should always just tough it out. Clearly, they've never had some truly horrific experiences because there are serious emergency situations where trip killers are necessary and I think everyone should have one on hand just in case. It's also great knowing you have a trip killer and that ending the trip is an option which will probably reduce your overall anxiety and increase your odds of a good trip anyways. Take that from someone who's tripped hundreds of times and only needed a trip killer twice. If you want to know more about the complicated distinctions of bad trips, check out the video before this one, I'll also link it below. So of course how a trip killer affects you depends on a whole lot but as psychonauts we typically have access to three main types. The most common and most recommended type is benzodiazepines like Xanax and these other ones on screen. These are good because they act quickly and won't actually kill your trip but instead just dull it and get rid of your anxiety, you'll probably still be far from even being California sober. So unlike our next drug class antipsychotics, benzos are not going to sober you up, they're just going to make the trip more chill. You know, maybe some of these naughty entities could use a Xan too, like damn hyperspace jester, maybe you could learn something from the Bartards. It's also really important for you to know that benzos are seriously, seriously addictive and the would are some of the worst you can experience. If having them available for trip killing purposes means you'll relapse or take them for non-trip killing purposes, then it might just be better to not have access to them and you might want to have one of the other options instead. Also, many of these trip killers have a lot of dangerous interactions with other drugs, so make sure you're doing independent research. Remember, this is just one video and I don't have enough time or meth to go through all of the risks. With Bezos, the more you take, the more of an asshole you are. Whoops, did I say Bezos? That damn autocorrect. With Benzos, the more you take, the less you're remember and the better off you'll probably be the next day provided it was enough to turn your trip around. So I wouldn't impulsively just take a big dose, something little to take the edge off will usually be a better option. I like how Psych Substance described the benzo timeline. Step 3. The placebo effect takes hold the second I swallow my saliva and I start to feel calmer because of the mere fact that I know the trip is going to end soon. Never underestimate that placebo effect. Step six. One hour after taking the trip killer, I notice the visuals have substantially died down alongside my psychedelic headspace, and I begin wishing I never took the trip killer because had I felt this calm without its help, the experience would have actually been enjoyable. I'm feeling regret. It's also really important that with any trip killer you use, have it all prepared beforehand so that even a two-year-old can figure out what to do. You don't want to take the trip killer, ego death, and forget you took it and take another one or two or more. It could kill more than just your trip. I always scatter a couple of doses around my room, or you could keep one in a pocket or something. Or hey, if you're this guy, you're kind of sorted out there. With our next trip killer type, antipsychotics, things get a bit more complicated. I haven't tried this combo personally, so I can't really speak on it, but based on my research, even though a lot of people recommend them, I would treat these like New Zealand treats COVID and be really, really careful. They're typically harder to access anyways. Don't go this route without having done a lot of research yourself and make sure you know what you're doing. Whilst most people report it completely sobered them up and stopped their trips, some say it made things worse. They usually also take longer to kick in than benzos, which isn't really ideal. Next 
Next up, I'm just gonna call it other because we have a nice variety of drug classes and a nice variety of drugs. Such a nice variety that we varietize ourselves into some pretty bad options that even Dr. Seuss would hesitate to try. First is Trazodone, also called Desiral. This is an SARI and like antipsychotics, is gonna need a lot of research on your end. I would only pick this over something like Xanax if for whatever reason you can't take Xanax safely and responsibly. A lot of people claim alcohol can help, but I can barely drink that stuff sober and I'm British. Ish. Once I actually planned to drink alcohol on the tail end of an acid trip for a party, but acid me laughed at how dumb sober me was for expecting that and had some weed and hid from everyone else with my acid buddies instead. Even if you can hack it, alcohol can make things worse both physically and mentally, so this is far from something I recommend. Phenobut apparently helps too, but it just takes too long to come up, making it impractical as a trip killer. Some people also say Kratom works, and no, my source isn't this guy. But Kratom is generally mild, hard to consume, and can give you serious nausea, so I don't see why this would really be an option either. If you're looking to calm your trip a bit but don't want to take a low dose of a benzo, there's actually some great natural supplements and a bonus method you can try it and I'll leave a link to that on your right. But if you can get away with turning your bad trip around without more substances then that's even better and I'll have a whole guide on all the best methods in the future so make sure to subscribe and click that bell if you haven't already. If you want to reduce your odds of having a bad experience in the first place then I've got a whole hour long psychedelic course just like the videos you see on my channel linked on your left that helps you do just that and all kinds of different ways that you can even stack together. It also focuses on not just having good experiences, but both good and valuable experiences that actually help you grow. So check it out if you're interested in taking your trips further. Thanks for watching everyone, wishing you all some good ass psychedelic journeys.